has been about the West and about solutions to the West problems. Uh, and also how we may progress as a Western world. Now, we have problems of the Bin Laden crime family, of China, the rise of China, and what will happen between the tensions between the EU and the US and England, also whether England will join the EU or not as part of the Euro. But beyond this, there is... Um, questions about the sovereignty of the United States vis-a-vis -vis the, 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 the ability of the United States and other countries to control their, their central banks, such as the Federal Reserve in uh, New York and Washington, um, and its monetary policy. Really, the monetary policy of a country dictates its, its ability to be sovereign over itself. If, it cannot, if a government cannot print or coin its own money, its own currency, that is, because the level of money in an economy really doesn't change, it's the level of currency that changes, and that is created by human, human um, actions, you know. The level of money is a... The concept of money, as I said in my video, Clash of the Economists, Noel Ferguson versus uh, Paul Krugman and Joseph Stiglitz versus the ECB, is, uh, is about the, the level of production versus the level of, of uh, wants, needs of the people versus the, uh, the um, level of currency in the economy created by the central bank. Or, in a free market system, by the level of uh, demand for that currency by individuals, if you take one Mises route towards it. Now, this is all sounding quite technical, and I don't want to put you off it. Not all of this will be about economics. Um, but uh, economics is vital to an understanding of the relationship of the West, particularly between the U European Union and the United States, the two dominant powers in the Western world, and the two halves of the Western world, arguably. Tony Blair even talked about the EU and the US being in a sort of cold, de facto, cold war. Um, but with the rise of China, I think it's time that we put aside our differences. I've been criticised as being too pro-American or too anti-American, or um, too pro-German or not pro-German enough by friends and uh, critics on YouTube, and I'm not uh, at all wor worried about this. I'm, I'm happy to be criticised and to respond to your comments. This is channel is your channel as much as it is my channel. Uh, but the, the real stupidness about the, the rivalry between the EU and the United States is... It, and also it is so stupid because as Winston Churchill put it England is the link between Europe and the United States there are cultural, racial historical reasons linguistic reasons and linguistic reasons is very important because Europe is becoming more and more an Anglophone nation the United States already speaks English as its first language and Bush even called English the um, the language of freedom is one of the few things I agree with him about. Um, but the role of Germany in Europe and the role of the different states in America is quite actually quite similar. It's not different at all. The United States has a two-speed economy. Europe has a two-speed economy. Europe's two-speed economy is between the Mediterranean countries, which are having some problems now, and the the um, because they've invested in financial services, ironically, in the European case, uh, and they're having problems because of that move. They move too far towards the Anglo-Saxon model, um, and Germany and England and France, the three core countries of the EU, uh, I would say we should make an 
a, a maritime alliance, which I'll speak about later on, um, I've heavily industrialised. David Cameron, one of the few things I agree with him about, and also um, the Labour Party leader in Great Britain, have said that um, we should re-industrialise in Britain. So we have a two-speed economy. In the United States, the two-speed economy is between the coastal regions, which are mostly democratic, and the, what has become known because of the recession, as which was caused by the Federal Reserve, in my opinion, um, as the Rust Belt. That's the Republican heartland, most mostly Republican heartland of America, where people are actually leaving towards the coasts and it's either becoming an industrial wasteland or is becoming agrarian. Now, I've been to the United States before, so you can criticise me for my opinions about the Republican heartland. I am actually quite pro, quite neutral between uh, the Republicans and the Democrats. Um, but I'm more leaning towards the Republicans, even though I'm a social Democrat, which is a paradox um, at the moment. But... I've not visited the heartland of America, so you can criticise me for that as well, if you'd like. Um, what, what is certain is that the different um, economic policies of the ECB and the, the, the Federal Reserve couldn't be more different. The Federal Reserve has gone on an expansionist monetary policy. The Americans have an imperial, imperial project under Bush, to create democracy throughout the entire world, in Niall Ferguson's words. Um, but they also have had big government republicanism under Bush, and big government dem dem um, under, the, uh, under Obama. Fiscally and structurally, their problems haven't changed. Whereas the ECB has taken some tough decisions. But... The conflict between the ECB and the Federal Reserve has spilled over into politics. It's spilled over onto YouTube. This is probably where some of the tension has come towards m myself, um, because I'm trying to f bring the way I'm trying to talk about the West as a unity here, and I'm trying to f walk a fine line between being too pro-American or too pro-European. And I must not forget I am English, and my primary aim is to be pro-English. Um, so, but the Federal Reserve's stupidity is to export its inflation to Europe, which should be a prime market for American goods. European consumers are now paying, and European citizens, more importantly, are now paying for um, the Federal Reserve's mistakes or calculations, Machiavellian calculations, it, it might even be said. And the Federal Reserve, even stupidly or knowingly, has created a system whereby inflation has increased and is being stored and exported in Arab and Islamic banking systems, which will eventually fall into the hands of the Bin Ladens and Saudi Arabians to invest and cause uh, and invest and cause them to have more capital to invest in Al Qaeda. Um, and prosecute their war against America, which just seems insane to me. But is the Federal Reserve more interested in its uh, its friends in the Saudi and the Israeli lobbies than it is in America? This is a very difficult question for me to answer on YouTube, and I'm not going to answer it. I don't want to um, to give the the people who are saying about. Uh, that the Bin Ladens didn't do 9-11, any, any sucker on that on that issue. The Bin Ladens did do 9-11, I know it for a fact. Um, and this is where the common enemies, the common enemies of the West, uh, should draw us together. What we need in, the United, in, in both the United States and in the EU is to recognise that we are one Western world. And I will talk about that in part two of this video. As as we're one part of the one Western world, we should be thinking about institutions which will make us more cohesive 